Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we have several games that are going to be showing us some new footage here in the next few days and we're going to get right into it here with this announcement from Nintendo of America. Join us on April 13th, 7am Pacific to watch the final pre-launch trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom live streamed on our YouTube channel. The trailer will be roughly three minutes long. So my first impression of this is three minutes? I mean, considering the last info we got was 10 minutes of gameplay, but I guess you could get a whole lot of information in a pre-cut trailer that's three minutes long. Now, since this says this is the final pre-launch trailer, that doesn't mean we won't get any more kind of media about this game. We could still see some kind of gameplay footage, or perhaps the website could be updated to add more in-depth information about different characters, or enemies, or even gameplay. But I do warn you not to hear what Nintendo is not saying. This very well could be the last new information we get about Tears of the Kingdom before it releases on May 12th. And the fact that this is going to be a live streamed event and not just a preloaded trailer means to me that there's going to be some interesting information in here that Nintendo doesn't want to get out early. However, the bad thing about a live stream is generally the video quality is not the best, but I'm sure Nintendo will put out a higher res version shortly after. So make sure you tune in tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern. This should be a pretty good amount of information coming from this live stream trailer. And then over on, I guess you could say the Sony side of things, although it's not a Sony game, but we do have this announcement here from PlayStation's Twitter account. State of Play presents more than 20 minutes of new Final Fantasy 16 gameplay this Thursday. Tune in live at 2 p.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. Eastern. So after you watch the new Zelda trailer at 10 a.m. Eastern, you can then tune in and watch this state of play at 5 p.m. in the afternoon. And this is all the information we have about this event tomorrow, just at what time, and it'll be about 20 minutes. But I do have to wonder, since this is airing exactly 10 weeks before the game's official launch, Will we see a demo, either Shadow Drop or maybe a date announced for a demo? Seeing that it's 10 weeks out, seems a bit early for a demo, but depending on how finished the game is, I could see them drop a demo and this kind of give the devs a chance to find some more bugs and fix them before the final release. Now as for me, if we do see a demo drop tomorrow, I'm probably not going to play it right away. Basically because say we get like 10 hours of gameplay from this demo and this is an RPG game that I don't then touch for another two and a half months, I'm going to have trouble remembering what I had already done or a lot of the gameplay mechanics. So if there is a demo, I would probably give it a try maybe about a week out before the official release. And sort of a well, where is the game type update, we have a headline here from Video Games Chronicle. THQ Nordic Community Manager denies claims that AEW Fight Forever is quote, basically ready. So for a little backstory on this, last month the president of AEW, Tony Khan, said that the game was finished, and this is according to a report by Wrestling Inc. And Khan was quoted saying, I can't say the exact release date. There's a lot of things that go into that. And I don't want to step on anybody with that. It is coming very soon. The game is finished. And that seemed to be correct as the game got an ESRB rating of T for teen back at the beginning of February. However, the community manager for THQ seemed to dispute this when responding to the claim that the game was quote basically finished. I mean, if you want an unfinished game, sure we could release it now. The game is doing really well and it is getting there, but not 100% yet. So yeah, just another rumor on Twitter I fear. Now you could argue the community manager may not know the exact progress of a game and is just sort of swatting away things. But many people are beginning to wonder where the game is at. It was scheduled to release back in February but was delayed. 
And according to the wrestler Kenny Omega, it was to scale back and get the desired ESRB rating. And now because of the multiple delays of the game, the roster's out of date. For example, CM Punk was fired from the company and he was one of the main ones on the original poster for the game. And I do have to wonder, with the great success of WWE 2K23, if THQ is not wanting to kind of beef this game up a little bit more before its release. But hopefully we'll find out something soon. I was looking forward to playing this game. It looked interesting with a little bit of a different take with some of the mini games on it. And then we have just a short little note here from the official Redfall Twitter account. Redfall is launching on Xbox console with quality mode only. Xbox Series X will have 4K 30fps, while the Series S will have 1440p and 30fps. 60fps performance mode will be added via game update at a later date. So needless to say, many people were kind of shocked to hear this. I know I generally like to play in performance mode, I just like the smoother gameplay and I have to wonder how long it will be before we actually see that 60 FPS patch. I'll probably wait to try the game until after that patch comes out. And I saw a lot of people on Twitter speculate what will Starfield release with? Will it have the performance mode later in a patch or will it be available day one? So let me know if this changes your thoughts on Redfall, if this is something you're going to wait to see what the performance patch does, are you pretty much sold on getting it day one, or at least downloading it on Game Pass day one. And then finally we have the games announced for PlayStation Plus for the later part of April, and these will be coming out on April 18th, starting with Kenna. Bridge of the Spirits for PlayStation 4 and 5, and this is a story-driven action-adventure game. And then we have Doom Eternal for PS4 and PS5, and Riders Republic for PS4 and PS5. And then two Wolfenstein games, we have The Old Blood and Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus, both PS4 versions. And then we have Slay the Spire, which is a PS4 game. This is a fantasy deck builder adventure that fuses together card games and roguelikes. And then we have Monster Boy and the Cursed Kingdom for PS4 and PS5. The Evil Within for PS4, which is a survival horror game. Bass Master Fishing for the PS4 and PS5. Paradise Killer for the PS4 and PS5, and then finally Sackboy, a big adventure for PS4 and PS5. And then in the list of classic games, it's interesting that all of these are actually PS4 ports of older games. We have Doom, Doom 2, Doom 64, Doom 3, and Dishonored Definitive Edition. So while those are nice to see, it's kind of odd that they didn't bring any PS1 games over this time. And probably what's more interesting is the short list of games that are leaving the service. This was a small note at the bottom of the announcement at blog.playstation.com. As part of our normal content refresh, Marvel Spider-Man, Resident Evil, and NBA 2K Playgrounds 2 will be among some of the titles leaving the PlayStation Plus game catalog in May. Now you may be thinking to yourself, isn't Marvel Spider-Man a Sony title? So you have to wonder why a first party title would be leaving PlayStation Plus. I do have to wonder if it's because we may see that Spider-Man 2 announcement soon and maybe Sony thinking, hey this might spike some sales of the first Spider-Man. But who knows, it could just be some type of weird licensing agreement, although Spider-Man just came out for the PC very recently, so you think it would affect that as well. But if I get more information about this, I'll make sure to keep you all updated. And that's all we have for today. Did anything we cover catch your attention? And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already so you can get more of these videos into your feed. I want to thank you for watching and be good.